Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. It's March and I'm going camping. And I had the opportunity to spend some time on the ice with the creator of Beaver Lures, made right here in the Upper Peninsula. I make crawler harnesses, blade baits, spinners, uh, jigging spoons. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. March in the Upper Peninsula. The temperature can range from below zero to 60 degrees. It's a great time to go winter camping. I talk a lot about the things we can find in our own backyard, and in most cases I'm talking about the Upper Peninsula in general. In the UP, you don't need to venture far to find yourself away from it all. With that in mind, I decided to take my own advice and create an adventure, well, in my own backyard, sort of. This is my actual backyard. And this is the lake that connects to my backyard. This spot right here, about a half a mile away, is where I'm headed. They said today the high would be 49. They were incorrect. At the start of my adventure, it's windy and the feels like temperature is three degrees. Nonetheless, I packed up my gear and headed across the lake. The short trip and the big sled does allow for a few more comforts. Some people might say an overnighter a half a mile from home isn't much of an adventure. True, to some extent at least, the further you head into the wilderness, the greater the adventure feels. But if you can make it more about the destination itself, it really doesn't matter as much how long it takes you to get there. You might say half the fun is getting there. Again, true in many cases. But I'm not sure traveling by ski, pulling a sled full of camping and filming gear will turn out to be my favorite part of this trip. Also, being in my own backyard provided me the opportunity to go out a couple days ahead and scout out the area for just the right place to camp. And for the ever important, firewood. I'm looking forward to a campfire, some snowshoeing, sightseeing, fishing, cooking dinner, a night in the woods, and a hot cup of coffee along with breakfast in bed in the morning. I'm looking forward to the solitude of it all. I found a spot under an ancient cedar tree. The tree is not going to make building a shelter very easy, but a spot with no snow is pretty hard to pass up. Before I even begin construction on my home away from home, I need to work on my heating plan. I typically end up with a bunch of small wood, which of course is much easier to work with when the equipment list features only a hatchet. But a nice dry hard maple is pretty hard to resist. I'm all for roughing it, but if I'd have thrown my chainsaw on that sled, life would be a whole lot easier. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you by Race Driven, your source for premier power sports products.
Now, time to build my house. There are typically some rules I tend to follow when putting together any sort of structure that I plan to sleep in, or under. For obvious reasons, I always try to put the backside roughly to the direction I expect the wind to come from. It's warmer, of course, but it also keeps me from waking up like a smoked ham. I usually try to keep it as simple as possible. A log between two trees and a tarp angle to the ground. But today, the tree that I'm determined to live under is pretty much dictating the way this plan will come together. After a few different attempts, some rope, bungees, and a handful of redesigns, there she is, home. Well, more of a bedroom than anything, I guess. Complete with mattress, blanket, pillow, and comforter. Bringing that sled did have its bonuses. It allowed me to add in a few more luxury items, like a lawn chair. home building, firewood, and lunch successfully behind me, I think it's time for a bit of sightseeing. Yes, those are UP Best snowshoe bindings. As easy as one, two, huh. A couple hundred or so episodes ago, I did a springtime show about this very lake. I've lived here my entire life, and like anybody who grew up in this town, spent a lot of time hanging out here, at what the locals call the pond. We swam here, we fished here, and all the things you do when you're a young punk growing up in a small UP town, we did here. That's the bald eagle's nest. Been here as long as I can remember. There's the Little Cedar River, which feeds the lake. It starts several miles north of town as a trickle and gathers water along the way and feeds the lake right here. From here, it flows many miles to Lake Michigan. Of course, we have to check out the spring. I'm not sure how much of the lake water comes from this spring, but it typically stays open right through winter. After enough sightseeing, it was time to swap out the snowshoes for skis, a pole and a hatchet, and hit the lake for some fishing. Right about now you're thinking it would be crazy to chop a hole through the ice with a hatchet. And you're right. The last of the ice shacks just came off the lake a couple of days ago. So I'm thinking I can knock the ice out of an old hole, and I'll be in business. Bad idea. That hole had more ice than I had hatchet. That's more like it. Well, he's got a ways to go before he finds out what a fillet knife is.
no dinner plate for that one either. The sun was getting low, and I fished long enough to get the urge to fish out of my system. I decided it was time to head back to camp for dinner. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you in part by Crist, your Northwoods neighborhood store. Now, time for dinner. This is a freeze-dried meal. It's about as convenient as you can get for backpack adventures. It's light, it doesn't need refrigeration, and it's easy. All you need to do is add water. This is a steak, and that's what I'm having for dinner. A meat thermometer? You betcha. Then dark sets in. All of the setting up, chopping, snowshoeing, skiing, fishing and cooking is done. There's nothing to do but relax by the fire. Eventually slide into the sleeping bag, the occasional crackle from the fire, and the sounds of the night. Nowadays, sharing my world with a pack of nearby coyotes is not so bad at all.
9060 Doors is brought to you in part by Blades Bait and Tackle, your hard water connection to Little Baby Knock. As spring gets closer, it means the time to ice fish is nearing its end. It also means that when you do get on the ice, chances are the weather will be a lot nicer. I caught up with Caitlin Beaver of Beaver's Lures on a sunny day on the waters of Little Beatty Knock to do some walleye fishing and talk about lures. right now it's about 14 feet right here so I like to send them pretty light, just so the fish don't feel a tug. So we're just setting up tip-ups. We got beaver tips on. It's just a treble hook with a little neon tip on there. So I'm gonna drop it down and get the depth. It's about 12, 15 feet here. I like to put it about eight inches off bottom. And then we mark it with a sinker. Yeah, you don't wanna put the hook too deep or you'll spine them. Just right underneath the skin. They don't swim as well this way. So the fish are staging by the rivers right now, getting ready to spawn once the ice moves out. So typically, if you catch a walleye, it's gonna be a fat walleye because it's full of eggs and they're probably going to be over 25 inches. I'd be surprised if we caught anything any smaller than that so should do pretty good. We've been doing pretty good every time we've been out so we haven't been skunked yet yeah. and if we got a fish on it's a nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> when we usually catch them it's usually between 28 and 30 inches I'd yeah. say. We've been catching probably three or four at night. And then the other week it was, yeah, we caught a pike that was 35, so that's yeah. the only pike we've ever caught out here. So uh, I'm gonna be using a blade bait today. So since these blade baits vibrate, you don't wanna put a full minnow on there. I like to put a, just a minnow head on this top hook and then just cut it off right at the head. Just like that. And what I like to do with it is drop it down to bottom, give it a jerk off bottom pretty fast, it'll vibrate on the way up, and then just slowly jig it back, right back down to bottom. <laughs> fast jig up, and then slowly jig it back down. You can bounce it off bottom a little, then another fast jig up, slowly back down. And the walleye will typically hit on the way back down. So I started making lures with my grandpa, just simple things like crawler harnesses, and he was a big walleye fisherman, but during quarantine I didn't have much to do, so I just started making lures and it's kind of taken off from there. So I make blade baits, uh, here's one of them. This is the dirty beaver. I like to jig them off bottom and when you lift up they'll vibrate on the way up. And then usually if there's a walleye there it'll hit on the way back down. So I airbrush all my lures and I have a mold, a lead mold for them too. So I mold this little head on there and then I airbrush the rest. And 
then I make some crappie jigs. We've had really good luck with those this year. And then I also make ball head jigs, spoons, blade baits, uh, ball head jigs, crappie jigs. And then more towards the spring, I'll be making uh, spinner baits, spinners, and spoons for trolling. As you may have noticed, the fish didn't cooperate so well that day. So when I found out that Caitlin and crew were heading out again to a different location, I decided to tag along. And we did eventually manage to connect up with the walleye. Digging the tip ups and then I eventually saw the tip up go up so I ran over, set to hook and brought him right up so finally get some action. Nice 22 inch male probably. And a three inch sucker, doing it a foot and a half off bottom and they'll get it done, so. Feel free to join us on Facebook or visit us at 906outdoors.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get on the 906 Outdoors email list. We'll send you an occasional email with tips, recipes, and more. You'll also be eligible for giveaways just for being on the list. Thanks for watching and we invite you to join us next week for another adventure right here on 906 Outdoors.